Do we eat here? So, can we use to refer the serious content, serious content, serious content regardless of what published to the ads? And we use this API for the local development, uh, so, uh, retrieving the non published content. So, these are the API playground URL for the preview endpoint, and it's using the API key for the authorization. So, where we get this API key? So, we get this API uh, in the content editor for the preview endpoint. So, we will have a configuration item. Uh, you, let me show you the, uh, yeah, we will have the uh, configuration item inside the cycle system setting devices and API. So we will be having that item based on a template API. So this item ID will be used as a API key for the preview endpoint. So let me show you an example here. So I want to fetch um, the uh, item and to show its title field value there. So here I am utilizing the preview endpoint here and in authorization I am using the API key. So uh, providing the key name as SC underscore API key and in value I am providing the configuration item ID. So we, we can use this API key with or without curly brackets, even we can use the lower keys and upper keys of this item ID. So any combination of this format is allowed for the uh, API key. So in request coding, I am using a GraphQL query to get an item by path and show the title field value, right? So, In response, we can see the title field value here. So here value is the updated form page. So it's retrieving the non-published content. Whatever we have in the XM instance, it's retrieving that value. And this API we use for the local uh, development. The next we have the delivery API. So delivery API is a graph API that provides access to the upload and published content. Right, and we use this API, uh, this API for production related action. So retrieve the published item, and this is also used to optimize the performance and high availability. And uh, uh, this is also use the API key for the authorization. So how we get the API key for the delivery endpoint? Let me show you. Yeah. So in XM Cloud, select the uh, specific environment and go to the settings. In developer settings we have yeah. So here we can see the uh, site for API key. And just click on the generate the API key, we will get the API key. And that API key we can use for authorization for the delivery endpoint. So let me show you how we are fetching the content using the delivery API in the postman. So in the request URL, uh, use it uh, as an uh, delivery uh, endpoint here. In authorization, uh, we are using the same key as C underscore API key and provide that value that, that is specific to the environment here. In request coding, I am using the same graph query. I am fetching the title field value for the same item. But in response, we can see the value is home here. So it means it's retrieving the non-published content, not directly from the external instance. So use the delivery API for any production related action. And for the local de uh, development, we can use the preview endpoint. So this is all about uh, uh, how, what is it, uh, this endpoint and how we are getting the token for this API and how we are retrieving the content uh, from using this API. Next we will discuss what are the best practices. Okay. So, what are the best practices for implementation, which will make sure that uh, we have to reduce latency and we have to better experience while data removal uh, using GraphQL. So, 
First is schema design. So it is always recommended that we should have modular schema design. What do we mean by that and how we can achieve it? By using content types effectively. So in Cypher world we call content type templates. So to hold any data, you should always uh, define the clear content types and they should be distinct. Uh, you should avoid generic templates or content types because uh, they may create ambiguity and inefficiency. Uh, next is inherit templates. So inheritance is a like we all know is a good and it always uh, good for maintaining the consistency and maintainability. So wherever appropriate, you should use inheritance uh, for our content uh, template structures. Optimize feed and algorithm. So always create required fields. Like what all fields are required to hold uh, necessary to hold our data and get our data. We should always create those fields. The fields which will be rarely used, we should avoid creating them because with the time they will uh, in, increase the complexity in the query retrieval process as well. Field types. Um, we should always create the field types on the basis of data they are going to store. And always prefer using simple field types because, as the name suggests, those are simple to use. So, by simple, um, I mean uh, single line text, they can be multi line text, they can be date or number. And if you have any uh, requirement to hold complex data, we can use, uh, go for uh, RT and JSON uh, field as well, but we should use them judiciously. Field naming convention. As the name suggests, field naming convention it is a very basic thing, but we should always keep in mind as a developer that we should always uh, name uh, our like, fields and items uh, clearly and the name, uh, as the name suggests, because it will improvise the maintainability and uh, structure our content. Structure our content for performance. What, does, what do we mean by that? We should use flat structure. By flat structure, it is uh, uh, it means that we should avoid deeply nested structures for holding our data. So wherever applicable and appropriate, we should uh, always offer flattened hierarchies uh, so that uh, the data retrieval is easy and the query complexity can be minimized. Bucket our content. Bucketing is a, not a new concept in Cypher. So to hold similar kind of data, we should always go for uh, bucketing, which will help us in optimizing our data efficiency. Optimize our query execution. So we can optimize our query execution by efficient use of flat This can be done by selective data matching. So we can uh, we should always uh, use our flat request to uh, like get or fetch data whatever we need. We should avoid getting additional info because it is not of use and also uh, like slow down our retrieval process, batching our queries. We should combine our uh, like multiple related queries into single requests because it will uh, overall reduce the number of network calls for us. Fragment review. So, this is also for the developer perspective. Fragments are good to use in uh, graphic. Uh, they are similar like networks we use in our normal coding. Um, so, wherever we have the common path like in this example, you can see uh, I want some information about the home page and about this item. And the structure of that field is identical in both of them. So, instead of me writing my code again and again, I can use fragment in this scenario, which will uh, improvise the code integrity and ensure the consistency. Optimizing the query performance. We can again optimize our query performance by minimizing the nested queries. We should always avoid deeply nested queries to get and fetch our data because they can gain for performance issues. Uh, we should always fetch uh, necessary related data in the main query and consider separate uh, queries for any additional data which we require to uh, support our content or marketing. Filter and paging uh, the results. So filtration and pagination is always recommended uh, as best practices while we are handling large data sets. Uh, this will reduce the amount of data which is being transferred and processed. Indexing and content structure. So uh, it is recommended that for content indexing, it should always be up to date so that whenever we uh, get our data from experience edge, it can be retrieved efficiently. And we should always go for site code indexing uh, strategies to custom and we can customize them uh, as well to match our query patterns as if required. 
flat content content structure we have already discussed about it uh, so deep in acid content structure should be avoided it is the can lead to complex very very repeated process and slow down uh, rb first as well and caching strategies caching is a wonderful uh, like say you should never be go uh, like uh, we are making a solve for the uh, response time so edge caching is there, the response caching is there, and experience edge. Edge caching, we can implement the cache rate edge, which will reduce our load time and server load. So whenever we have a frequency access uh, request to some uh, like content, we can cache them at the edge so that uh, there is no uh, load on the servers. Response caching, we should always uh, use uh, cycle based caching to cancel to uh, cache the query results for uh, identical requests. So that we don't have to process them again and again. Uh, this is a few examples like how we are optimizing our queries. Uh, this is before optimization, this is after optimization. So I have already covered this point before, but we can go through it again. It is the only item and about page item. And we have given a graph way to get its title field as a description field value. So instead of uh, like repeating my code again and again, I have used, uh, we can use fragment here. This is the syntax for using fragment. So PHP fragment has been created. And for uh, getting the uh, like similar information, we can use this PHP fragment. So this will ensure that we have uh, consistency and simplify our query as well. Fetching only requirement. So this is uh, basically an example of a requirement where I have a blog post component on my home page where I require my top three articles over there. So this is a graph query which is written um, like getting my item, a home page item. Um, home page is uh, like we are seeing here home page and blog post and we have written it directly. So this is again a like the key feature which we just uh, talked about was uh, strongly right. So the templates which we have created in Sidecode can be used directly here in GraphQL. So those are strongly right. We, like unlike our traditional method, we don't have to create a model to support all the themes which are present over on that template. We can use those uh, directly. So on home page, I have this title, image, we had in feature available, also a CTA button. And in the children, I'm getting all the like, and I haven't passed any parameter as is asked for children on that blog post related to blog post and with these details. So since I required only three articles here in this optimized query, we have passed the first three. So this will limit the child activity. So it will like uh, make uh, improvise our performance. Uh, just a note here: uh, if we are not passing any parameter. Uh, we generally get 10 items in the results here. <coughs> Next, we discuss some real time challenges and what are the possible solutions to overcome these challenges. Yeah, so first we have this schema security concern. Uh, the flexibility and introspective nature of GraphQL is beneficial, but it also introduces a unique security concern. So, what solution can we follow to address this? Uh, uh, Challenge. The first is authentication and authorization. Using authentication and authorization, we can protect our GraphQL endpoint. And we can also use a uh, role based access control. So that provide an ad, uh, additional layer of security. The another feature is uh, another solution is the query complexity analysis. So uh, the GraphQL allow to write multiple queries from the multiple sources in a single endpoint, so that which can manipulate the overly complex queries and uh, degrading the performance. So, uh, analyze the in, uh, in complexity of incoming requests can prevent from the uh, complex and malicious queries. Next, we have the rate limiting. So, uh, denial of service attack can overwhelm our endpoints with too many requests, right? So, using the rate limit, which can control the number of requests a user can make within a time zone. So, using this solution, we can enhance our security. The next security, uh, next real time challenge is schema management. So, as I have already mentioned, the graph will allow the seamless versioning and evolution of API. So, here we have challenge how we are managing the multiple version of the schema. So, what solution we can follow to address this uh, challenge? So, first is schema version. So, without proper schema version, even the minor schema, schema break can cause a serious issue and uh, leading to the downtime and significant user frustration. So, uh, use a schema versioning to support 
different version of a schema at the same time and can help uh, in the smooth transition. So next solution is a duplication logging. Uh, in GraphQL, uh, any field, any type can be marked as a duplicated, right? So using the duplication warning, we can inform to the client about the uh, upcoming changes. So they can give them time to update the query accordingly. The next solution is the schema documentation. So maintaining the schema, do uh, schema documentation is essential because it helps the developer to stay informed about the schema structure and upcoming changes. So this is how we can, by implementing this measure, we can uh, we can uh, manage the schema budget. Okay. So the next real time challenge uh, which we face by implementation is performance issue. So graphical queries can become complex and result in performance bottleneck, especially when we are querying class data sets or deeply nested structures. So like in best practices we already discussed that we should avoid it. But in real time scenarios and aggregate scenarios are very different. So we have to deal with class data sets and deeply nested structures, right? So how to mitigate those? By optimizing our queries. So we should always try to optimize our queries by limiting your fields, the depth of your queries to strictly what we require. By using efficient filtering and paginations uh, to handle our large data sets. Uh, next is, is based by caching. So we should implement the caching strategies at edge and CDN so that we can reduce the load on server, uh, graphical server, and for, like, for identical and similar requests, they can be returned from the uh, like cache only. In Excel, we should always uh, make sure that our underlying uh, data store is properly indexed so that the queries uh, when they run they get the expected data. This is the common like uh, error which we get when we like uh, we surpass the uh, query complexity threshold. So query too complex to execute. This is a config file uh, services or graphical. Uh, here we have these configurations uh, available uh, to manage our uh, like graphical complexity. So this complexity uh, is not a definitive number which we can evaluate through formula. It depends upon a lot of factors which includes the fields, uh, number of fields, and uh, filtration, sorting, and any custom resolver, sorry, the custom resolver aspect. So by default, this value is 6,000. Uh, max complexity and max level is 25. Uh, like in the vanilla instance when we are uh, installing. So we can uh, increase it uh, by 2 or 3. It is, these values are here for some reason. If we are increasing them, then they will be uh, like obviously an uh, adverse effect on our application. So they may uh, like uh, involve the resource consumption that we are doing, the efficiency and uh, all those factors. So we should like try into, like, increasing these values if we are not able to optimize our query and still not able to get our expected results. So this is a place where we can manage our complex, uh, complexity error. Next, uh, the challenge which we, uh, real time challenge which we face is, uh, the data even after publishing multiple times is not available uh, through edge API. So what we can do to uh, like mitigate or solve that particular issue? We can try clearing our cache. So we should clear both experience uh, edge cache as well as browser cache so that we can make sure that we are working with the latest data. We can also verify the publishing logs just to make sure that uh, we don't have anything which is preventing our uh, successful uh, publishing. Try with the basic queries. Like instead of uh, like trying with uh, Complete queries, we can break down our graphical queries and use uh, either Postman or Playground uh, to uh, debug or identify the root cause or which section is basically causing the issue. So, this will help us in isolate the issue, like whether it is with the content or with the query structure. So, this will definitely help us. Apart from that, uh, there is like uh, publish after publishing the time when we see it on edge, there is a significant difference in the publishing time which we usually see on our content delivery servers and edge server. So on edge, when we publish, the time is slightly more than we see on like CD servers, so we should at least wait for some time uh, till we start our visit.
Um, so yeah, this was all from our side. Um, we hope you were able to provide some insights um, regarding experiences in Grafter to you with our experience. And we want to thank our sponsors for organizing this uh, wonderful event and this meeting this wonderful and vibrant community. So looking forward to it. Thank you.